Hey, checking in. I already made the cup of coffee. I started making a video, like, it was just, I was waffling, so they speak, so they speak, so they say, about just everything about the PlayStation 5 Pro. Guy, I don't care about the PlayStation 5 Pro. I don't care about any of that stuff. It doesn't, it does not matter. It is an incremental upgrade. Yes, I wanted the 30th edition, but that's because of the colors. I thought it was cool. And scalpers, you know, got the best of it as they do. Um, you know, those people that just buy to sell, to hike up the prices, to make a quick buck. Hey, you know, it is what it is. You know, those kind of people that do that. I want to say negative things and be mean, but I'm not going to. I, I'm not going to. You know, it's fine. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I have been in a proverbial desert oh, desert land for the past year of just like, who the heck am I in this space, right? Gaming, uh, manga, lifestyle, like it has been this insane journey and it's been a hard one. Man, dude, it's been so hard because I have had to look back on like 35, well, 25 cognitive years of my existence and been like, yo, the reason why you have been basically bashing your head up against the wall and just screwing yourself over at every opportunity is not because you self-sabotage, but because your brain doesn't work the way that it's supposed to work so that everything else in the world works. Right? That didn't actually work out right. Essentially, my brain doesn't function the way that the general world and society wants it to function. And so I am at a disadvantage. So I've been persuaded by general way of doing things. I have attention deficit hyperactive. And here's the kicker. Disorder. Disorder. And that part for me has been like, if I'm being honest with you, like one of the hardest things to grasp is like, it like disorder, like it is classified as something that is divergent, neurodivergent. Like I am not the typical, I am not neurotypical. I am, it is not. It's not like, oh, you're special. It's not even a special thing. It is a disorder, not typical. That's lame, dude. That's freaking lame. And yeah, I, you know, part of me is frustrated. Um, but then I look at kind of the, the, the general way of things and I'm like, dude, do I want to be someone who puts blinders on and doesn't see the world around me? Like doesn't see the small, tiny nuances that exist outside of my like narrowed vision. I, no, I don't want to be that way. Like, I don't want to be someone who's like, this is it. This is all that exists. I'm only going to do this. I am, that's who I am by, you know, because that's what I need to be. I can't do it, dude. Like, I haven't been able to have like a career job ever because the thought is like, you need to do it a certain way and you can't do it your own way because if you do it your own way, it's not the way that you're supposed to do it. So therefore you can't do it. And that for me, dude, has always been something that's like hyper challenging. It's just like, hey, I need you to do this thing for me. And then if you don't do it the way I'm asking you to do it, even if you get to your own conclusion that is similar, if not better than the conclusion that I was trying to get to, wrong, you need to do it my way. And it's just like, dude, I, it's so tough for me to fall into that. And gaming for me has been such a special thing because it is kind of a thing that you get to do your way. You get to make decisions. You get to um, experience things a different way, whether it's progress through a game with the typical amount of experience that you would need so that the game isn't hyper difficult or beeline it for the bosses and make sure it, and make it more challenging for yourself because you skipped a bunch of stuff or conversely, do every side quest and every tiny little nuance that the game has or experience every nuance that the game has to offer and just OP your character. Like you can decide. And gaming has been like a saving grace through my life for this. And I didn't realize that, but like it genuinely calms me because it allows me to be me. It allows me and it rewards me for using the brain that I have. 
And I'm so, like, genuinely frustrated by the fact that this thing that I, I guess, have been uh, classified. Like, it's just, I'm struggling with it. I'm struggling with it because we are, like, as general people, told you need to only do it this way. And if you don't, go get tested. Or you need to only be able to function at this capacity. And if you can't, go get tested. Go get tested. Go get checked out. Go get your brain checked out to see if you have a disorder. And I'm like, dude, I, I've i struggled for sure to do things the way that society as a whole needs me to do things. I haven't struggled with discipline. I mean, I've lost 100 pounds at one point in my life. I got in a horrific car accident and did all the PT to get myself up and running again. Like I very much so can be disciplined, but when it comes to mundane and uh, reasonless, uh, just do it because I said so uh, for the next couple of years tasks, that part is challenging for me. And some would say, well, just try harder. And to them I say, okay, Cool. I just hate that, and I use that word, I do, I do mean it, I hate it. I hate that this is something where the internal struggle that I've been having over these past months of kind of discovering the way that it has affected my life over the past 25 years has been because the, the way that I felt has been negative. I felt bad about it because I'm like, oh. I've had this broken part of my brain that's screwed my life up, essentially. And by the outside looking in, like, that's exactly right. You haven't been able to hold down a job for your whole life. You have had multiple jobs. You don't have a career. You're always changing things. You're always trying to find the next new thing that's going to, you know, excite you. You can't focus. And all of those things, factually, are correct except for the last one you can't focus it's not that i can't focus it's that the focus in which i have looks wildly different than the focus that is has been expected of me i edit videos while watching lord of the rings i read books among those that have pictures in them while listening to music i clean the house faster if I'm talking on the phone. I work out better if I'm with other people. I guess that's pretty normal. You know, you know, working out by myself is challenging, but I work out better if it's CrossFit because it's always different. Sticking to like a bodybuilding program is just a nightmare for me because it's just like, oh God, this again? This is so boring. But it's just, dude, like video games as a whole have been unknowingly completely saving my brain from this socially, what they see is catastrophe. What I see is beauty. I've learned that like, I mean, if you think about it, right? Like if we think about, I was watching something that was talking about this, a TED talk and where a guy was talking about ADHD and he's like, hey, you know that like at one point we were out there with the wild animals. And so in being out there with the wild animals or being around more wild animals, not having buildings and maybe our buildings were a little bit less sophisticated. Um, if there was a noise out, a little brush, a little, you know, sound, we should look over to it. We're having a conversation with our buds, all sitting around, you know, the fire, eating food. And then all of a sudden, sh 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 everyone, Because the conversation, while it is good, it's enriching, it's wonderful, that noise could be the last noise you hear before a bear comes and eats you. Like, we now live in a society where it's very different, but the problem is that I'm realizing my attention is not something that I am allowed to control. It is something that needs to be controlled by other people, and if I don't let them control my attention, then... I have a disorder. 
That's stupid, dude. That's so dumb. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that ADHD doesn't exist. It does. I 100% believe in it. I thought it didn't at some point. But all I am going to say is, is it a disorder? Is this something that we should look at as, hey, your brain is broken. I know that that's not necessarily the way they look at it. But I feel that way. I feel that's the way that people look at it. I'm neurodivergent. And while some be like, yeah, dude, you got like the special brain. It's like, do I? Do I really? Because I don't feel that way. I don't. I've had conversations with people that I really care about. My wife being incredible. She also has ADHD. And it's interesting to hear the responses from people and to see their body language change. To be like, oh, that's a kid's disease. And like, oh, you must be stunted in your growth. What a bummer. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help that I play video games, you know, but what a bummer, right? I have seen how this is kind of trans, like not transcended, but it has like made its way into other pockets of my life with my, pff, look at, I mean, look at this channel. Where have we been? Everywhere and back. But it's because unfortunately for me, I am doing something in a space that rewards you for being single track mind. It rewards you so much for playing into, hey, I am not a person, but I am a thing. I can't do that anymore. I can't. Some are like, oh, dude, just focus on the one thing and let it. I can't do it because I am not Steam Deck. I am not Xbox. I am not Nintendo. Not any of that. I am not now PC. And before I understood how my brain worked, I basically was like, oh, I need to attach myself to this because it's the only way that my brain or that I'm going to be able to be something. This right here, this video is algorithmically a catastrophe. Because this isn't what people watch, I guess. I don't know. It's so weird, dude. It's so weird. So weird. It's part of the reason why I've really gravitated towards live streams and being a streamer more in this latter part of my content creation, latter part, this next phase of my content creation job is because I really enjoy the give and take that happens. If you like live streams and stuff like that, I'm trying not to make this sound like a YouTuber thing, but like if you like live streams or if it's something you wanna be a part of or something like that, I do live stream. I live stream almost every weekday at 7 p.m. Pacific time over on Twitch. Same name, JD Coffee or JDX Coffee, right? I drink coffee because it tastes good. I just found out that I also drink coffee because it calms me down. I didn't realize that that was something that was happening. But when I'm feeling stressed, anxious, um, unbalanced, I drink coffee and it centers me because the brain chemistry that I have allows for coffee to, as a stimulant, actually stimulate parts of my brain that brings me to a balanced state of thinking. And so to those of you in the comment section who are like, you need to stop drinking coffee, it's too much, or you're an addict, bro. Yeah, There's a reason why I drink it. I didn't know that that was doing that for me. And honestly, it seems like I drink a lot because of the way that these things go. Um, and I may drink more than most, but this little pour over situation is my second 360 gram cup, which for some clarity is like, the yield is less. The yield is probably like more than 315. I think this is like eight ounces of coffee. Maybe it's a little bit less than that. This is less than a tall cup of coffee at Starbucks. And I have maybe two of these a day. So like, this is less than a venti cup of coffee at Starbucks. The two coffees I drink is less than venti cup of coffee at Starbucks. Just so you guys know. Okay. Um, but I'm like, why am I defending myself? I don't know. It's been crazy. And I wanted to have a cup of coffee and hang out with you guys, kind of podcast style for a little bit. This is just gonna be a shorter one, um, but I enjoy doing these. But again, the reason why it's kind of been all over the place lately is because I'm trying to figure out what, where does my brain flourish? Where does my creativity get excited? And I'm realizing 
that my creativity gets really excited in interaction, the back and forth, the conversation. It's, it's always changing. I never know what to expect. It's such a welcomed experience for me when it comes to this. When it comes to content creation as a whole, I think that I've fit my, um, my square type brain. No, my, uh, I would say star shaped brain into a square peg pretty much as far as I could. I'm now at a point where it just, it's not going to fit anymore. I just, I get excited about ideas, but I'm just, I'm not capable of pulling them off at the level I was able to before. And that's because of, you know, plenty of other stressors that exist that require attention that leave my attention pretty much depleted. Um, with my two children that I give them every part of me that I can from the moment they wake up to the moment um, my wife gets home because then she takes over for me. I, I just, I don't have the capacity, even on days where they're not here with me um, because they're over at my in-law's house. Like I don't have the capacity to like bring myself to do things the way I used to because my brain is just so taxed. I just can't do it. And you know what's been really interesting is watching other creators. I just watched, um, oh wow, it's, why is it all like slimy? That's weird. Um, I just watched Wood Hawker, or beat em ups as you would know him, play through some of Echoes of Wisdom on stream. And um, he did one and a half days worth of streaming. Well, 13 hours on one, and then like four hours on the other. And on the towards the end of the fourth one, it showed, and he explained it very, he articulated it well, that there was some weight to it emotionally that was happening to him. And I'm seeing the toll that this is taking on people and how this pressure is existing. And I just, I'm not made to do it like everyone else. I'm not, I'm just not. The reviews, the way that they used to be, I just, I've hit a wall, dudes. Like, it's gonna have to be conversation. It's gonna have to be lifestyle. It's gonna have to be that. And it's just because I, I'm at, like, I'm subsequently at my wit's end at the same time at, like, at a starting point. Does that make sense? Like, I am at the end of my rope, but I am at the end of the rope that I want to let go of before grabbing the next. It's exciting in some ways. Terrifying in others because letting go is a huge part of it. Um, but again, what's wild is the path that I have chosen to travel down is one that requires a specific type of person to make it happen. And it's not that it requires that specific type of person internally, it's that externally, this thing that exists wants you to do things their way. And it's the reason why I'm having a hard time continuing on using a PlayStation and I wanna switch over to PC for gaming because I don't like that I have to wait for daddy Sony to make decisions for me to use my games. And if they make a decision I don't like, it doesn't matter. I don't get control. I don't like that. I don't like spending my money and not having control over my goods. That doesn't make me happy. And as I've become more aware of the way that those, these other companies, consoles specifically, excluding Nintendo, because Nintendo's access to those games aren't anywhere else, do that, it's hard for me. Now, Nintendo is guilty of that same type of philosophy when applied, like, across all boards. Like, they make decisions, you get to play their games. But they have come out publicly and have made many statements, and recently have made statements, that they are not interested in keeping up with Xbox and Sony as far as power. That's just not their game. They don't care. They don't care at all. They're here for experience and for that Nintendo factory. And I think that all of us... I've grown to love Nintendo for that, so that's, you know, where I'm at with that, but happy Friday, everybody. I, I'm, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. And again, if you're interested in being a part of
like the creation side of things, the content creation that I do. Um, I'm currently creating content while streaming because I, as I stated, really enjoy it. So that's over on Twitch, linked below. You can follow me over there. Um, it'd be great if I could make a job out of that, but that's its own bag of tricks. And for those of you who want to know what we're doing over there, and by we, I mean me, myself, as well as the community who joins me, currently the game that is being played is Final Fantasy VII Remake. And the goal, right, I hope that it happens, but the goal is to play that story as much as we have. So Seven Remake into Crisis Core, intentionally in this order, because I believe the story reveal is really powerful that way. And then Final Fantasy VII Integrate, which is a two to three hour story um, from a specific character's point of view. And then lastly, getting into Rebirth, which is the most recent installment in this kind of, tr this trilogy, this saga that we have. Um, from the Final Fantasy VII world. And so that's the goal, right, to do that. We may take pit stops along the way, but that's where we're at. And we, I say community, not me. I'm an I. <laughs> There's not multiple people in here. <laughs> Although some days it feels that way. Okay. I wanna finish the rest of this coffee, but my daughter has a birthday party tomorrow and I wanna uh, clean the house, so. I'll see you later. Thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, hopefully I see you over on Twitch. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's drink more coffee. More coffee. More coffee. Oh, be kind, and play more.